Being a developer and working on tech can sometimes feel exhausting. It is very common for developers or people that are studying to become developers to burn out. Everything changes so quickly. There are new frameworks, libraries, and updates coming out all at the same time. It can feel hard and draining to keep up, like swimming against the current. It's okay to push hard from time to time, but when we overextend ourselves and push hard for long periods of time is when we start to burn out. I personally haven't burned out, but I have had periods of time where I know I'm burning out. And when that happens, I really make an effort on stopping it before I burn out completely. I have seen people that burn out and it's not pretty. So we have to be careful not to let it go to that point and stop it before it's too late. If you search online, the number one advice you might see is that to stop yourself from burning out, you need to rest. The problem is that in my case, that advice did not work. So what I found out is that instead of resting, what I have to do is to recharge. The way I see it, resting and recharging are two different things. Resting is hard to define. Recharging, that is easy to notice. If after work, I lay down on my couch, scrolling to Twitter or TikTok, you could say I'm resting. Maybe, but am I recharging? No. After hours to scroll in through social media, I notice that I don't actually feel better. Maybe my body is not tired, but my brain is in an even worse shape than before. And burning out or not in our industry is all about keeping the brain healthy. So instead of just trying to rest, I try to do what recharges me, what makes me feel better. What recharges you and what recharges me might be very different. So if you know what recharges you, then go ahead and do that. More power to you. If you're not sure about what activity recharges you, I would like to suggest you try exercising. Exercising does wonders for your brain. It is like brain food. It literally helps your brain learn and remember more. If you have a sport that you like and you are already exercising, then keep doing it. But if you're like me and find going to the gym dull and boring, I have a suggestion for you, which is what this video is about. This video is about the sport that I can confidently say changed my life, climbing. Climbing is such a cool sport. It not only makes you stronger and healthier physically, it also makes your mind stronger. It humbles you. It makes you face your fears to focus more, to problem solve, and to be more mindful, more present. There are many types of climbing you can do. As of today, we, my wife and I, have done bouldering indoors, lead climbing and top rope climbing indoors and outdoors. Indoor bouldering is what most people that are into climbing start with. Indoor bouldering is what you do on a climbing gym where the walls are not that high and all you need are climbing shoes and chalk. The walls on the gym will have routes you have to climb, also known as problems. And your job is to climb all the way up. Usually the routes are short, between five to 10 moves. And as they become harder, the holes become smaller, are more far away, and you need more strength and balance. From your first session doing bouldering, you are going to be humbled when you realize how weak your body is. You are also going to fall and fail publicly in front of strangers, which will also make you check your ego, be comfortable showing vulnerability, not caring about what people think, and asking for help. But it's also very rewarding. If you keep coming back to the gym, one day you will be able to start doing moves you could not do before, and that is a really good feeling. Another lovely thing about climbing is that it does not feel like a workout. It is problem solving with your body. Time flies when we go to the gym. The reason why I started climbing is because I wanted to get rid of my fear of heights. So after many months of indoor bouldering, we moved to top rope and lead climbing. Indoor bouldering is cool and is what we do the most often, but the routes are short and the style of the routes is moving away from rock climbing and it's becoming more like parkour with a lot of swinging, jumping and flying. Top rope and lead climbing are a form of climbing where you climb a long, tall route far away from the ground. These routes require more endurance than indoor bouldering because the route has more moves. Where in bouldering you do five to 10 moves, a top rope or lead route has at least 20. The difference between top rope and lead climbing is that in top rope, your harness is connected to a rope that has an anchor at the top of the route. On lead climbing, as you go up, you have to connect the rope to the anchors all the way up, which is very challenging. You don't only have to climb the route, but you also have to stop and clip the rope. The falls are also bigger. You can do top rope and lead climbing both indoors and outdoors. But I really, really recommend you find a way of doing it outdoors. It's an amazing feeling to climb on real rock and to have to find the holes as you go up. The holes in the gym are color marked so you know which holes you can use. On the real rock, everything can potentially be a hold. You have to discover them and it can get scary when you can't find a hold, you are 20 meters above the ground and your arms are getting tired. To climb long routes indoors and outdoors, you will 
need a partner and you will need to trust them with your life as they will be the ones giving you rope, holding it and bringing you down. So it's also an exercise on trust. Climbing long routes is a mental battle for me. You need to be able to stay calm when you're up there, you need to learn how to breathe and you need to be rational and control your monkey brain. This happens to me a lot. While climbing, I know I'm safe. The rope is good, the knot is solid, the anchor is okay, my wife is belaying me and is grabbing the rope. But even though I know these things, I still get scared. My rational mind freaks out while the rational mind is saying, don't worry, we got this. Just keep going up, breathe, you'll be fine. But that feeling, that feeling after doing something my mind was telling me I was not going to be able to do is what I'm addicted to. This is a route in Bangkok that had easy holds, but that was just incredibly tall, the highest I've ever climbed. I spent more than 20 minutes just looking at it from the ground. I did not want to go up. It was a mental battle that happened before I stepped up to the wall. The feeling when I finished that route, the feeling of proving my fears wrong, is something I wish everyone can get to feel. I'm still afraid of heights. The fear will never go away. But thanks to climbing, I learned that I can do things despite the fear. And that is why I made this video. I know I never make personal videos like this one. And I understand if this is not what you subscribed for. But I really wanted to share this beautiful sport with you. It will make you stronger physically and mentally, which may be what you need to change your life. Climbing is also an amazing way of emptying your mind, refreshing your brain, and forgetting about whatever problems you have. Because when you're up on the wall or the rock, nothing matters. Just the present moment and the rock you have in front of you. Thank you for watching this video. If you think it's valuable, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Give climbing a go and push yourself to do something you're afraid of. Something you think is impossible because of the lies your mind tells you. I believe in you. You got this. Also, please don't forget that if you want to learn to code for free, click the link below where you can take free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter and many others all for free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onjana, kamsahago, sarang hamnida. See you on the next one. Tamebayo. Bye bye.